in the morning of December 17, 1773, just to the southeast of Boston, a 15-year-old young man walked to the shores of what's called Dorchester Flats. It was a large, muddy, slick bank that was exposed during low tides. It was the morning after over 90,000 pounds of British East India Company tea had been tossed into Boston's harbor from the decks of three ships. This event occurred roughly between 6 and 9 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, December 16, 1773. At that time of night, it was low tide, or as the colonials called it in 18th century, low water. The tea ships at Griffin's Wharf would have been sitting in only a few feet of water. That tea was tossed overboard, but the loose leaf tea began to pile up along the sides of the ships. The outgoing tide then deposited some of the detritus of the event on the nearby shallow mud flats of Dorchester. It was there that 15 year old John Robinson discovered a wooden box. It measured 10 inches high, 13 inches wide, 12 inches deep, and made of half inch poplar or spruce. The only known surviving tea chest from the Boston Tea Party. To John Robinson, this unassuming wooden structure was a box worth keeping. He took it home and decidedly kept it out of sight. Like many of his generation, John Robinson would soon pick up the musket and fight in the War of American Independence. It is said that upon John's return, the chest was proudly brought out into the family home and celebrated. John would go on to marry and have a family of his own. His wife, Nancy, gave birth to three children. Now, two of their sons, Ezra and John Jr., went on to marry sisters Patience and Marianne Marsh. When John Robinson finally passed away, the chest remained in the care of his widow Nancy, who shortly remarried Isaac Holden, and eventually they settled in Governor, New York. In the late 1840s, more than 70 years after the chest was discovered in Boston, Nancy Robinson Holden was compelled to part with the tea chest. You see, her son John Jr. and his wife Patience became very ill, and Patience's other sister, Zilpha Lorena Marsh Shaftstall, and her husband Solomon took care of them and nursed them back to health. In gratitude, Grandma Holden, as she was then known, gave the chest to Solomon and Zilpha. The Shaftstalls lived in Wisconsin and had several children of their own. 1864 would be a difficult year for the Shaftstalls. One of their daughters, Anna Amelia, tragically died of heart disease at the age of 18, and her husband, William Cade, succumbed to pneumonia and died seven months before, thus leaving their only infant daughter, Mary Lorena Cade, orphaned, and to be raised by grandparents, Solomon and Zilpha. Almost 30 years after receiving the chest, Solomon Shaftstall gifted the Robinson tea chest to little Mary Lorena when she was about eight years old. Years later, Mary recalled receiving the chest from her grandfather. She remembered it had colonial poke bonnets in it for which she loved to wear and play dress up. For a time, she kept the chest on a low closed shelf only to discover at one point that her favorite cat had found a nice, cozy, protected place to have a litter of kittens. By 1892, the family had moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and it was there in 1896 that Mary Lorena met and married Isaiah Ford. The following year, on August 25th, 1897, in the presence of her grandfather, Mary Lorena Cade Ford recorded the first surviving history of the Robinson Tea Chest, briefly describing its journey thus far. We are proud to display that letter here at the museum. Also that same year, the Ford family welcomed their son, William Cade, into the world. And the very next year, 
their daughter Helen. The family resided for a time in the General James White House of Knoxville, Tennessee, named after the founder of Knoxville, itself a piece of early American history. This is considered Knoxville's first residence, which Isaiah bought in 1906 and relocated a very short distance to its current location where it still stands today. In 1910, the Fords moved to Corpus Christi, Texas, and then on to San Antonio. Following Isaiah Ford's death in 1917, Mary Lorena moved in with her daughter Helen and her husband, George Ware. Mother and daughter shared a fascination with the chest, speaking often about the history of their family treasure. On April 1st, 1948, in an effort to authenticate documentation of the chest's provenance, an affidavit was written and signed by 84-year-old Mary Lorena, supporting the authenticity of the letter dictated to her and signed by her grandfather 51 years before. When Mary Lorena Cade Ford died the following year, the chest's preservation was entrusted to both of her children, William and Helen. Although the chest was technically in Helen's sole possession for only 12 years, the family treasure, so valued by both, remained in seamless possession of the two women for 89 years. Upon Helen's death, her mother's wishes would be honored, and the tea chest would transfer hands yet again to Brother William. In 1974, an unexpected call came from the Smithsonian Institute of Washington, D.C. In preparation for a multi-year celebration of America's bicentennial, the renowned institution was producing a new exhibition that would celebrate the nation's first 200 years. Five days before the exhibit was set to open, the Institute had heard of the existence of a tea chest salvaged from the Boston Tea Party residing somewhere in Texas. They tracked it down and humbly asked William Ford for permission to display the chest in this new exhibit. The family agreed. It was reported that the Robinson half chest, as it was officially designated then, was quickly packed in a disguise box labeled Tutti Fruity Twinkles, a popular cereal of the time. And it was given a security protection all the way to Washington, D.C. The family treasure was curated into the National Portrait Gallery's first bicentennial exhibit, In the Minds and Hearts of the People. The exhibition opened on June 14, 1974, and the Robinson chest was viewed by millions, assuming its place among other relics of the founding generation and descending from that of a family treasure to that of a national treasure. I have with me here the official published program book from that exhibition. What I find unique is that there is no mention of the Robinson Tea Chest in it at all. This book had already been printed at the time that the Institute reached out to the family. At the conclusion of the exhibit in Washington, D.C., the Robinson Tea Chest was transported back to Texas and was returned to William's daughter, Betty Ford Goodman, and her husband, Andre, who had inherited the chest. Sadly, William Ford had passed away while it was on exhibit in DC. Following its moment in the national spotlight, the chest was placed in a bank vault in Laredo, Texas. And for a brief time, it was on display at the Institute for Texan Cultures. Betty and Andre Goodman, along with their five young children, Adrienne, Andre Jr., Janelle, Shelley, and William, were now the caretakers of the box, as they called it. The Goodman children, now adults, have fond memories of the box. And in the spirit of oral family history tradition, I reached out to the Goodman siblings and asked them to share a few memories of their own. I am pleased now to share with you their stories of discovery, intrigue, their own sharing, and family pride. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Shelly Goodman Henson. My family and I are the former owners of the Robinson Half Tea Chest. My first memory of the Robinson Half Tea Chest is from 1961. I was about seven years old and my family was visiting my Aunt Helen's house in San Antonio, Texas. During our visit, she got out the Robinson Half Tea Chest and told us about our family history with the National Treasure and how it was passed down from generation to generation. She told us it was a very special heirloom and she talked about the game that's carved in the bottom of the chest and she turned it over and I rubbed my hands across the chest that it was deeply carved into. And for a seven year old, I thought that it was kind of neat that they even played games back then. On the same day, I vividly remember taking a picture of our family with the Robinson Half Tea Chest. My Aunt Helen took the picture in her front yard with my family. And I'm thankful for my Aunt Helen. She was a great historian and educator. My name's Andre Goodman. Obviously, we've got a lot of fond memories of the uh, tea chest, but uh, I want to go back to when uh, uh, my mother and I, uh, we were talking about the fact that, you know, she wanted to get the tea chest uh, to the public. It was sitting for years underneath the, uh, the table there in the uh, dining room, and uh, she felt that, uh, you know, after it being displayed during the bicentennial, that again, uh, it was her wishes that uh, it would again be uh, seen by uh, many others. Uh, my mother uh, was so happy when it uh, finally did uh, get back to being displayed at the Boston Tea Party Museum. My fondest memory was when I was in elementary and again in middle school. I had to do a research paper both times. I immediately thought of the box as my siblings and I fondly referred to it. I quickly became quite the pro at incorporating the Robinson Half Chest into the history of the Boston Tea Party and used it as my show and tell research paper. Each time I took the tea chest to school, it was always well received by my fellow classmates and the teacher. I guess I thought nothing about the true history of the Boston Tea Party and the Robinson Half Chest and the family's connection until I got a lot older and could learn to appreciate the true history. And by the way, I did get an A plus as my grade on my research paper. Hi, I'm Liam Goodman. I'm the youngest of five kids of Betty and Andre Goodman. One story that I'd love to tell about my favorite thing that my dad did was uh, he took the time to take some of the uh, information that my great aunt Helen had put together and, and make books for us that we would each have our own history book of the Robinson Half Tea Chest. And I want to thank the museum for giving us this opportunity and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Janelle K. Guman. I'm one of the chairs of merits of the Robinson Half Tea Chest. I remember when Dana, who works for the museum, came to the house. He looked at the tea chest. When I walked into the room where the tea chest was on display, it brought great joy. And I knew other people would be able to enjoy it too. It, seeing the display, seeing it there on Boston brought so much pride uh, to myself and my other family members that were there. I really felt proud of somebody at the museum who was looking at the tea chest. I am glad that the Robinson Tea Chest has found a good home where generations of Americans will be able to appreciate its story. We want to thank you for joining us for another episode of History at Home. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the lineage of the Robinson Tea Chest. If you have, and you would like to have a piece of that history story at home with you, please visit our website, www.bostonteapartyship.com, where you can purchase your own Robinson Tea Chest, filled with the five teas thrown over during the Boston Tea Party. Thanks so much for watching.